remember, freedom is not free. We have been fighting for our civil rights and legal rights for years. The fight is not over, but we're doing it, right? Yes. In the words of Sam Cooke, it's been a long time coming, but change is gonna come. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. help is human rights. But what has been shown to has been shown again and again, time again and again, because of structures of racial oppression, the opportunity to exercise that human right to live a full and healthy life is not shared equally among all of us in our communities, in our cities, and here in our Commonwealth. We know from the data, sorry, we know from the data on effective rates that COVID-19, the pandemic has hit black and Hispanic communities especially hard. This is just another reminder that until this disassembles racism and systems of oppression, we cannot effectively respond to public health crisis. And racism is a health crisis. Yes, <laughs> so, as we stand here today together to act against racism, violence against black men and black women, yeah. I'm asking you please protect each other as we go on to our day. Wear your mask, which covers your nose and your mouth. Keep your distance. Wash your hands either with hand sanitizer or, of course, soap and water. Thank you, and remember, together we rock. And happy Pride Month. <laughs> Thank you. Also want to point out one thing while I'm up here is that when we're talking about defunding or redistributing funds, this is our money that we put into the city. Yeah. If, yeah. Yeah. Amen. If COVID-19 showed us anything, the backbone of America economics is on the worker, on the essential worker, on the people that come to work every day, that go to the supermarkets, that go to the every local business office. When we stop going to work, the economy shut down, right? Yep. So we want to move our money to another part of our society that we are 100% justified in asking for. Yeah. So, another person coming up is Bishop Dickerson from Greater Love Tabernacle. Thank you, Joel. And I don't want to get up here too high. I got a little basketball injury. But uh, happy Juneteenth, everybody! I'm, I'm glad to be out here. And let me tell you something. It is so wonderful to see so much diversity out here. Can we clap our hands for diversity? In Boston. I want to thank the, um, Brother Joel and the organizers of this gathering because it's important for us to come together to know that there are problems in our land and there are problems in our city and that those problems are not going to go away because we act like they're not there. We cannot ignore things and act like they're not there and expect those things to go away. It's sad that we live in a nation where the President of the United States was oblivious to Juneteenth altogether did not know of a Juneteenth until just recently. It's sad because we, we fight and argue with people about the term Black Lives Matter. Well, maybe we should have started out saying Black Lives Matter too, because all lives do not really matter until Black Lives Matter. Can I get an amen? Amen. And so I'm an American, and I'm a black man. And don't deal with me because you're colorblind. Deal with me because you can appreciate my blackness. Like I, I, like I can appreciate your background and your ethnicity. Diversity is a wonderful thing. And so I'm tired of fighting for what belongs to me. Just basic 
human civil rights. We're not asking for a handout. We're not asking for a hookup. We, we need what belongs to us. And if they, listen, if we are connected to the indigenous people of this country and we're connected to the slaves that helped build this country, then why are we fighting for what is rightfully ours? All we ask asking for is a slice of the pie. We're like little kids sitting at the table and eating food. And we're that kid whose, whose table, whose, whose plate is just about empty and the other plates are full. That's what we're just saying. Give us our portion as black people and people of color. Give us our portion. I grew up in the city. I went through forced busing. I was, I was fortunate to go to Boston Latin, graduated from Boston Latin. But let me tell you something. We had our problems. We had our issues there. And people wonder, why you stay in Boston? It's racist there. I said, well, it's racist everywhere. But we cannot run because of racism. We cannot run because of bigotry. We cannot run because of hatred. We gotta stand tall and stand together because united we are going to stand and divided we're going to fall. That we're part of the human race and we deserve to uplift each other. We're not gonna ignore the pain of racism. We're not gonna ignore the pain of sexism, sexism and all kinds of ism and skin. But we're going to stand tall and love each other in spite of differences. We can learn from each other. I want to salute you all today for coming out, standing up for what is right, and recognizing that, listen, dealing with racism has been a public health crisis for years. And once they're acknowledging it, they're acting like it's a surprise. It's a surprise! Racism is around us. It's in Boston. It's in the United States. But I refuse to bend, buckle, and bow. We're going to stand together and we're going to be tall wherever you are. Continue to talk about unity. Talk about love. Talk about peace. But do not ignore the pain around you. God bless you. And may ever smile upon you. Happy Juneteenth. Can you guys still hear us? Can you still hear us? That's amazing. I know you heard him. I'm talking about me. So, Darlene Lobos. She is the executive secretary treasurer of the Greater Boston Labor Council. Right? She's going to talk about anti-racism within the unions. Because unfortunately, unions are great, but they've also got a hotbed of racism in our country. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from her. Come on, Darlene. weeks ago 
out and made a video um, about how we stand with Black Lives. And I'm just going to read you the statement, but you can see it on our Facebook and on our website. Our country is on fire, and we are fed up. Our economic and political systems are rigged to favor the super wealthy. Racism in all its forms must be abolished so that our multiracial working class can unite. The labor movement knows that we cannot win economic justice without racial justice, and that black lives matter. It's time to act. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Arbery, Sandra Bland, Eric Garner, and Tony McDade. Yes. We will grieve with our black families, friends, and neighbors who continue to suffer unimaginable violence and loss. We will speak up and speak out for more resources for black communities. We will march against police brutality and against any new jails. We will show up in the streets for homes for all, healthcare for all, and good jobs for all. We will have hard conversations with each other to push for greater understanding, healing, and unity. We will use our collective power to make sure black and brown people can breathe and thrive. We will organize to tax the rich so that we can defend and advance the public good. We will strategize and struggle together with our community partners and we will fulfill our duty to fight for that new world that we know is possible. Yes. We are Boston's labor movement, and we fight for black lives. When I say worker, you say power. Worker. Power. Worker. Power. Worker. power. When I say justice, you say no. Justice. No. Justice. No. When I say fight, you say win. Fight. Win. Fight. Win. Fight. Win. Thank you very much. Two, two things real quick. Artists, uh, <laughs> as, artists has reminded me, thank you to all the volunteers. About 50 people showed up and got all this set up. People helped me with the sound, everything. People passed out water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone had a medical incident, a nurse and a doctor came out the crowd and we were able to help her. So thank you to everybody. I just want to say something real quick. Ignore agitators. We knew they were going to come, right? But my friend always says, I say this all the time, you can ask my wife on like a broken record, the devil wraps the same gift for Christmas every year, right? We knew they were gonna come, we knew they were gonna agitate, we knew, I don't know what, I don't know why they want us to be shot by the police, the argument is nonsensical, right? Think of all the arguments we've ever had, we have to argue that we should be free. We have to argue that if we pay taxes, we should vote when they fought, when the United States fought a whole war over taxation without representation, right? For some reason, they never had a problem taking black people's taxes, but they had a problem with us voting. So we don't have to argue with them. We are right. The entire world already spoke. So please, ignore the agitators. So, I wanted to come, I, the next person up, is a young brother from in the, I'll call him young, basically the same name. <laughs> he's from, he's from, but he does, he's an artist, he's a musician, he's a rapper, he's a thinker, and most of all, he loves his community. So I really want him to come up and give you a perspective on what he's seeing from the artistic expression. Happy Juneteenth, everyone. Happy Juneteenth. Well, y'all can shout back at me. If you're from the black church, this you can say amen. If you're of the black, you can say yeah. You can say yeah. You can say whatever you want. So, so happy Juneteenth. You know me. I didn't. I I wasn't taught about Juneteenth in school. Right? I wasn't taught about Juneteenth in public school. I wasn't taught about Tulsa in public school. And so one of the reasons why. When the oppressor and the oppression tells the story, yeah. the narrative gets distorted, right? There you go. There you and go. And there's truth that's left out, right? Yeah. There you go. And so, one of the reasons, my name is Kayla McCoy, I'm a musician, I'm also, I also work at the Emmanuel Gospel Center, and one of the reasons why I love what I do is I get to tell stories, right? It matters who's telling the story, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. That's right. 
And so being a rapper, being a creative, being a musician, I get to tell my story. Yeah, People can't right. tell my story for me. I get to tell your story. I get to honor you as you tell your story. Yeah. And so I'm from Dorchester, born and raised up the right, block, right? Yeah. And so Dorchester, we have a strong community of creatives here, right? Yeah. Amen, we have a strong yeah. community of creatives. I know that Dorchester Art Project's up the street. Yeah. There's always stuff going on. We have talented and gifted people around this neighborhood. And so us creatives, we get to walk alongside you activists. We get to help tell the story so the truth is not distorted. We get to tell the stories of the George Floyd and the Breonna Taylor that, that often get overlooked in the narrative, especially the black women, amen? Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm a man of faith, and so I also like to tell a story of a man of color that want to bring liberation that was crucified by the state and religious powers, right? And so that's the stories I like to tell. So I have a heart for the creatives. We like to say black, black lives matter, black poets matter, black musicians matter, black dancers matter, black photographers matter, black videographers matter, black rappers matter, black musicians matter, black storytellers matter, black singers matter, black creatives matter. And so I'm all for, I'm all for freedom of expression. I'm all for freedom of expression, but my humble challenge to us is, we're gonna tell the stories of the pain, we're gonna tell the stories of the hurt, of the oppression, but let's not forget to tell the stories of the hope, of the faith, of the perseverance, of the freedom. And so, and so I'm gonna just leave you with a quick piece. Once again, my name is Caleb McCoy. If you're interested in my music or my art, you can come see me after. But I'll just leave you with, I said, I'm trying to be a fast learner. But I hope to grow numb, never grow numb to a black murder. I'm seeing God raising up a couple Nat Turners. Equality can't get put back on the back burner. That's word to the Lord above. All this hatred in the air making it hard to love. And sometimes it really feels like it all for none. So God hold the tears of every mother that lost a son. Yeah. Eight minutes and 46 seconds. It's disgusting. And you wonder why we distrust it. Sometimes I don't even want to discuss it. And to my people with the righteous anger, please keep that same energy when you write your mayor. Buy a home, start a business, don't file the papers. Gotta protect your legacy from annihilation. And much love to the activists. Educate us on the best ways to attack this. But I hope you find rest on the battleship. War against oppression, you can never be a pacifist. Just some honest confessions that the riches of this country were sold and bought with oppression. So talking against is cool, but don't stop at thoughts and reflections. It really calls for investment, including dollars and senses. So if you an ally, how you gonna barter your leverage? What's your power structure like? Tell me, who's your board of directors? Will I struggle to find a face that reflects a darker complexion? Because without resolve to that question, then you ain't part of the blessing. When we start the ascension, is met with force and aggression. Out of town has come to riot, then poof, they gone in a second. Some people want the attention, so cops are drawing their weapons. All these distractions gonna maintain us in an awful depression. Still, I got a lot to learn. I don't claim the answers. I'm working on my own values and my faith and family. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for passing laws that break the standard, but ultimately it's gonna be us that's gotta take advantage. It's just some food for thought. Enjoy the steak and salmon. I serve a God of justice, so I have to raise the banner. But before I face the camera, I gotta face the mirror. Either way, I'm trying to make it clearer. Thank you, my name's Kayla. Thank you, Kayla. Kayla. Got some tears. Uh, second pro tip, the rapper and the pastor always go last. The rapper, <laughs> so, if you don't know my normal job, I am a Boston public school teacher. And, uh, yeah, Joel. And so, the next person up, we have a personal relationship because I actually taught her son in first grade. So I did a good job because she still talks to me and answers my phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so the next person you'll be hearing from is Toledo Rocha, the political director of 32BJ SEIU. Come on up. Thank you.
Mr. Richard, as I still call him. <laughs> so my name is Dali Dahasha, and uh, I'm, I am here to remind folks that uh, black immigrants' lives matter too, right? Oh yeah. I am a resident of Dorchester, and I am a proud African immigrant. And on this day is about celebrating our ancestors, um, and it's about freedom. Um, and our immigrants, our African immigrants, and immigrants in general, are not free. We still have kids, we still have our brown and black youth in cages. They are still in cages, y'all. What are we saying? Do their lives matter? Okay then. So, our immigrants have been deemed essential through the pandemic. They have been putting food on your table. They have been taking care of your family members, but they're not taking care of. Our immigrants don't have access to driver's license for them to be able to do their job as essential worker. So today I'm here to remind you that black immigrants' lives matter, and you need to call your legislator and tell them that those immigrants deserve a driver's license so they can be able to continue to put food on your table and take care of your family members. And on this day, that's how we should be honoring our ancestors. And as a proud African immigrant, I thank you for welcoming me to this community because I've been here for 20 years. So this is my home, and I am here to stay! Yes! All right, so the next person you'll be hearing from is Ms. Shante Alves. She is a BTU member and a Boston teacher. Also, she teaches kindergarten, so you know she has a ton of patience. And she'll be coming, she puts up with me. So she'll be coming up here just to address our union. You're the ones who serve your children in Boston and taking a strong stance. And we are, we are going forth as an anti-racism union. And we're all, she's gonna explain what an anti-racist education looks like. Access 
to learning opportunity. Yep. Yeah. So what are your educators going to do about it? Let me tell you what we did about it. Last week, rank and, rank and file BTU members wrote and passed an anti-racist resolution that called for many things to change in our schools and yep. in our district. We demand that all employees of BTS be trained in anti-racist work. Yes. Permanent funding to go towards ethnic studies curriculum. Yes. Two certified special education teachers in an inclusion classroom. Yes. And for funding for counselors in our schools. Yep. Not yes. For police officers. Woo! Our kids don't need us. Our students need care, yep. not talk. I am an educator, a teacher of four and five year old beautiful children. And I'm here to tell you that we're fighting for you. Yep. My owls, I'm fighting for you. I promise you that we will change this corrupt system. Yep. Yeah. The color of a shirt does not have more value than the color of our skin mm -hmm. and our lives. Yeah. We're going to make sure that the education you receive adds to your self-confidence yep. because you have a lot to be proud of. That's right. So I'm taking off my mask because I'm about to speak. So what I want to do on, is I'm going to speak. And then I want you to have a little more community time. Then there's one more speaker going to come in after a little community time. And I think it's going to be worth your wait if you wait around for that. So people keep asking me like what my position is. I am just a conduit. This is all a collection of community groups and unions. I just called and everyone said yes. Someone called me out and said, why hasn't Dorchester had a rally yet? I said, well, let me ask around. Everyone said, yes, let's do it. I'll be there. And you guys showed up. So give yourselves a hand. So why are we here? Let's be honest. We shouldn't be here. That's right. Yep. In 1865, when the Union soldiers showed up in Texas and announced the end of the war, that should have been the end of terrorism and slavery for black people. Yep. Yep. We should have been emancipated. However, systemic white supremacy had taken a new form mm. under a new name of apprenticeship programs, prisoner alone out in lynching. Yep. Black people in the spirit of Juneteenth advocated, marched, and, and then ended and overcame that form of slavery and oppression. Then another form of systemic racial control, equal. Yep. Separate but equal was code for oppressed and vulnerable. Mm. It was code for sitting in the back of the bus or giving up your seat. Yep. Second class citizenship, the inability to vote, or enter public buildings or colleges. Mm -hmm. In the spirit of Juneteenth, even though we were not allowed in courtrooms or colleges or boardrooms, we overcame that and passed legislation protecting us from the systemic rage of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. It was 1983 before white and black workers were paid equally in the White House. As progress was made, a new code word for systemic oppression was created, super predators and war on drugs. That was code for mass incarceration, chokeholds, yep. no-knock warrants, and I had to shoot. I feared for my life. The destruction of our communities have many code words. Redlining, gerrymandering, yeah. imminent domain, yeah. vagrancy statutes, yeah. mandatory minimum sentencing guidelines, yeah. loss of voting rights due to felony convictions, yeah. three strike laws, which usually only applies to addicts, because I'm sorry, you caught an addict doing drugs, that's usually common sense, and also, Whole countries, I, I just kids here so I won't curse, but we all know what that sentence is. I asked, how has nobody ever thought, instead of more police, let's split the schools in half and send more teachers to better serve and educate? Instead of more police, more scholarships for college. Instead of more police, more job and economic investment in home ownership. Come on, Joel. Why are we here after 400 years? The whole world has finally spoken and said enough is enough. No more code name, no more systemic racism, no more systems of control. Give black people the country they deserve in 1868. So please do me a favor, don't leave yet.
please come and donate to the different causes we have up here. There's two wonderful volunteers that have fixed a cash app machine and made a, a cash box out of a, a paper box. And there's masks here to purchase. And please get water. Give us about five more minutes and after this next person, you guys can disperse. And also there'll be a cleanup activities if you signed up for here in Fields Corner too. So please just give us about, about four more minutes. But please come around and take pictures in front of the art installation. Thank you guys for coming.